Great to see you guys on the weekend. I'm just chilling out here doing some due diligence for recreational purposes. I love to do due diligence. And I was thinking about sharing some information with you on two stocks today, not just one. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of April 12th. Now, what I like to do on this show is share hot penny stocks with you. I trade penny stocks all through the week. These are stocks under five bucks and you can find them anywhere you look. NASDAQ, OTC, New York Stock Exchange. Any stock under five bucks is a penny stock. It's not about where it is. It's all about its price. And I'm always looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. And then I have something to share with you at the end of the day. Well, I'm going to share two stocks with you today and they are in the same sector. Cannabis. There. I said it, it's done, it's out of the way. <laughs> Why am I making such a big deal about that? Because as soon as I say the word cannabis on a YouTube video, I lose all my earnings for that video. They pay me nothing. I don't get any money for these. So instead of doing one ticker, we're going to do two. Since I'm not making any money and it's totally free for everybody, we're going to give you more than we normally get bargained for. Ha ha. How about you, YouTube? Now, it makes you wonder, can I get away with other words maybe, like uh, Mary Jane, marijuana, uh, ganji, pot, weed, puff, smoke, you know, there's a lot of words, twig, we could come up with a word, but, you know, forget it, we're going to call it what it is, it's cannabis. So, I have got two companies that I want to share with you today that are leaders in their industry. Absolutely on their own rights, they are leaders. Now, are they the best? Are they the biggest? No, but then that's very subjective. Who's to say who's the biggest, who's the best? It all depends on what you're looking at. What I can say is that both of these companies have a lot in common. They both work here in the United States. They are both MSOs. That is multi-state operators. Here in the United States, if you want to work in different states, you have to build separate facilities in every single state to support your business. Imagine Coca-Cola having to build a factory in every single state if they wanted to sell Coca-Cola there. Well, that's what the cannabis sector has to do in the United States. Well, these two companies are in multiple states. They've been here pretty much since the sector started and they have built themselves up. And what's really interesting is a couple years ago, these two companies were going to merge together. And it was the merger deal of the time. It was considered the mega deal. It was going to be worth $2 billion. Now, the reason it didn't go through wasn't because of any disagreements or problems. It seemed to be more about timing from what I could see. They just couldn't get things taken care of in time and it just fell apart. So we're going to look at both companies right now. They could pop at any time. Either company could run for any reason. The sector is heating up and you never know what's going to happen in this sector. Being America, we do have a lot of catalysts. We're falling behind the rest of the world. We're not an adult sector yet. The stuff that's grown in California has to stay in California. They can't sell it to anyone outside of California. Not anywhere in this country, not anywhere in the world. And there are countries now taking imports of cannabis from other countries growing it. We got lots to sell and we are locked out of the global market for cannabis right now. It is a shame. But there's a lot of people in New Jersey who would love to have some of the cannabis grown in California. Humboldt County, please send it over. But no, we can't do that yet. So when laws change here, the markets are going to jump. Not only because the laws have allowed them to get off the side roads and get on the highway, but because they're going to be able to do more business. They're going to be able to do banking. Right now, they can do no banking, none at all. They can't even put their money in the bank. Now, imagine that. We did about $30 billion worth of sales in this country, and that money is not in the bank. It's somewhere underneath somebody's pillow in a vault, hiding in some office, being guarded. That's what we have to do with the money in the cannabis sector right now. That's not very good. You know, it's dangerous to have that much money out there. And two, it's not in the banks. It's not being loaned. It's not in circulation. That's a lot of bloody money. And the companies will not be able to get bank loans. 
Do you know that they have built up this entire sector without any help from the banks whatsoever? Credit unions, they have gotten no loans whatsoever. This billion dollar sector, these million dollar companies, all they had was the investor's money and their shares of stock, which is really how they built themselves up. They had a lot of shares and they were using shares as money, making deals, mergers, acquisitions, getting bigger and bigger until they are what they are now. And still, they don't get any banking. You know what else they don't get? Tax deductions. Cost of goods, they get nothing. They get deductions that don't consist of anything to do with trafficking drugs. Comes down to this, there is an actual law out there, 280E, I believe it is. It was passed back in the early 1980s because a person took it to court who was found guilty of trafficking cocaine he had filed with the IRS tax deductions for the cost he got having to move the drugs around. Well, there was no law against it. And believe it or not, the IRS tells drug traffickers every year and drug dealers, you've got to declare your income. <laughs> they tell them that you've got to do it. Well, he made deductions and they said, because it is an illegal drug, you don't get any deductions for it. Well, there was no law at the time, so they passed a law. So the companies in cannabis can get deductions for things like their gas, for their uh, electric bill, for health insurance, for their employees. Things that run the business employee side, but not the business money-making side. So anything to do with buying seeds, buying property to grow this stuff, packaging it, selling it, the factories, none of that. They get no deduction. They are actually paying twice as much tax as any other company out there on the market, folks. And they're surviving. They have profits. They have stockholder equity. These companies are going to explode when they get the green light. Right now, they have reins on them and they're being held back. Imagine what's going to happen. And really, all it takes is during the presidential election year right now is for presidents who are wanting to be presidents start talking about it and it becomes an issue. It becomes a topic of discussion. All of a sudden, the stocks are going to start running because everybody's talking about it. And right now, the prices are very, very low. We did $30 billion worth of business last year. I expect once we get the green light, we could be looking at $300 billion worth of business. Because remember, we'll have import export. We'll be selling to other states. Synergies are going to be created when you can get rid of all the facilities and start using the hub and spoke method. You know, put one factory in the center of the country and start sending out your marijuana from there. All your production is sent to the hub and then all the products are sent out to the stores and all of that. So both of these companies are in that boat right now. So everything is really looking good for them. So let's look at the first one. This is Cresco Labs, ticker CRLBF. She finished the day on Friday at $2 even, and she was down that day almost 7%, which was about a 15 cent drop. She is on the absolute best tier of the OTC, which is where you're going to find the leaders of the cannabis sector. Here's the really aggravating part about being an American company. If you touch the plant, you cannot go onto the major exchanges. This is the top rung. You can go no higher, the OTCQX, where you virtually got to give us as many filings as they do on the major exchange. This is the most transparent, the most trustworthy by all means. If you're going to put your money anywhere in the OTC market, right there. That's safe. That's a safe zone right there. But they cannot go to the NASDAQ until laws change. They have hit the ceiling right now. But if you're a Canadian company or an African company or an Israeli company, you can go on the major exchanges if you touch the plant. So we've got companies that are foreign on our big exchanges and all of our U.S. companies are down here on the OTC. And they've got every green tick you could look for down here. The problem being on the OTC is getting validated information. All these green ticks is validated information. You've got a verified profile and a verified transfer agent. This is usually the only stuff you get with pinks. And I'm telling you to always look for these because it's important with every stock. They've got it. They got a bonus too. They're penny stock exempt. Even though they're two bucks, anything under five is a penny stock and they are on the OTC, 
they legitimately are not considered or classified as a penny stock. By all rights, we shouldn't be looking at it because I share hot penny stocks with you. This really isn't a penny stock. You're saying, why though? <laughs> looks like a penny stock to me, walks like a penny stock. Yes, except it's proven itself to be reliable. The actual definition for penny stock exempt, if you click that, it'll take you to it. All right, we'll click it and go to it. <laughs> Takes you right up here to the top. They give you three exemptions. I boil it all down. If you've been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars of assets or revenues during that time, and you've kept up with your financials, you've proven you're reliable, responsible. We don't have to worry about you being risky because you're doing everything that you're supposed to and you've got the money to back it up. So this is a very safe investment and with a lot of potential. Could pop next week, could pop next month, but you know what it is going to do? It's going to grow. It is going to be one of the leaders down the road and this stock is going to be worth, shoot, two bucks. This stock's going to be worth $80, $100, Folks, we've had cannabis stocks well over $100 already. The market sentiment has brought it all down. So let's learn a little bit now about Cresco Labs. We do have a pretty good description here. It's worth reading, but I'm going to come over here to the website and we're going to get some information directly from here. Cresco Labs is one of the largest publicly traded, vertically integrated multi-state operators in the cannabis industry. Now, what do they mean by vertically integrated? That means they take care of every aspect of their business from seed to shelf, everything. They don't depend on anybody else for anything. They plant the seed, they cultivate the plant, they harvest the plant, they process it, creating those nice little nugs we like. They create with innovation and technology all these other products, all their extraction for getting the oils for CBDs and THCs. They package it and then they retail it. And they're doing this in 13 production facilities in eight states. These are the eight states that they're working with. The ones that are totally green are legally both for medicinal and recreational, completely two separate markets. Now, if you go doing some research, they actually don't call it the recreational market. It's called the adult use market, which I find rather silly. You know, if there's nothing in opposition to it, like up, down, left, right, adult use, child use. No, there's no child use with these products. Right. So why do we have to call it adult use? Call it what it is. Recreational. If you get to use it whenever you want it and not because you need it, that's recreational. So these states are legal for both. These states are legal just medicinally. Now, the strange thing is medicinal markets make some very good revenues. Because it's considered prescription medication, they charge more for it. Why? Well, primarily because it's in the medical chain now of supply and there's a lot of middlemen in there we got to pay. That kicks the price up. Well, you're asking, well, isn't the bud better because it's medicinal? Not unless they're putting some other drug on it. A bud is a bud is a bud. <laughs> no, and I think that's going to be the problem because Florida has a ballot coming up November 14th of this year voting on recreational legalization. Well, they may probably get it. Well, right now, check this out. Florida did $6 billion worth of business just in 2023. Out of that $30 billion for the whole country, this state did $6 billion. And I do think we have 38 states legal one way or the other or both. But California being the hugest state, the wildest state, you know, they did exactly the same. Exactly the same. $6 billion. So between the two states, we had $12 billion out of that $30 billion. And that's without any export, import, or even selling it anywhere else. That's just in their own state. Now, here's what I think is going to happen. If Florida goes and legalizes the recreational use, they may drop in revenues but sell more marijuana. The reason is, is that there's a lot of elderly people down here, people my age and older, who grew up using marijuana back when it was illegal, but it was still being used recreationally, right? Well, now that it's medicinally gotten down in Florida, those old people are spending their money for prescriptions. Well, I just told you. 
there's no difference between prescription marijuana and recreational marijuana. Not bud-wise, only price-wise. So if they legalize recreational, isn't there going to be a lot of these elderly people who switch from medicinal prescriptions, not pay their doctor anymore, and just go to their local dispensary and buy it over the shelf rather than from behind the shelf? I think so. Focusing in on what the company actually sells. They've got a lot of products. Just from the get-go, as you would expect, they sell cannabis flower. Well, they've got over 150 strains. Every single one of those is a product that you can make into different products. So that's a lot right there. But they've also got edibles. They've got like mints, uh, gummies, chocolates. They've got tinctures, CBD and THC oils, vapes. They've got lots of different products spread out amongst seven different brands. Now, of their seven brands, three of them are number one in their corresponding states, which is a big deal. That is locking in and securing some strong revenues from those states. One of their first original brands and still selling is Cresco. This is that consistent quality people get used to buying over and over again. This is where they do a lot of their business. Another one of those type of brands is High Supply, but this one offers some more variety to the cannabis flower. You don't have to just get it in the big nugs that you have to break all the way down. You can also buy them in little tiny nugs, which they call popcorn, good for stuffing pipes with. But they also sell shake, already broke down so you can roll joints. But if you don't even want to do that, they sell pre-rolls, shorties, concentrates, vapes. They've got a variety of products in the high supply brand. Florical, this is their premier brand. This is connoisseur caliber. Florical are small batch cultivations, may not always be around. This can be very expensive. Now, is it because it gets you so high? No, not really. You know, when you go out and you buy yourself a good wine, it has nothing to do with, is this really going to get me drunk? <laughs> no, it's about the characteristics of the wine. You swish it around your glass to see how it lays on the glass. Is it thick? Has it got any body to it? You smell the aroma and the essence. You taste it and swish it around and catch a dab of this and a spark of that. Well, that's exactly what this cannabis is all about. It gives you real strong essence and flavor. And believe me, a lot of cannabis users are willing to pay for that experience. Then we've got good news. This is a brand which has brought together some innovative products like vapes and gummies and things like that. This one has definitely caught my attention. This is Wonder Wellness. Wonder Wellness first impressed me with their marketing. It is a no-duh marketing program. Put on the label exactly what it does instead of some fancy name. Why confuse me? I don't want to look at your product going, God, is this the right product? What's this going to do to me? Well, just read what they are and you know what's going to be going on. Laugh, sleep, focus, relax. We're not going to have any mix-ups here. As a matter of fact, I think that'll actually help them selling their products. Now, there's some interesting things about these products. First off, these are microdoses, between 2.5 and 5 milligrams. That's all. So they've got this one here for sleep, which is a CBD, THC, CBN, which is a very specific CBD, which causes you to be tired. That's what makes you want to sleep when you smoke a strong <laughs> marijuana cigarette. It's the CBN. Well, maybe you only need two before you go to bed and your husband needs four. No problem. This one here, laugh. Maybe it gives you a little uplift and you like the way it feels. You can work. No problem whatsoever. So you take one every two hours. That's what you like. Whatever fits your lifestyle. The other thing that's interesting is that these are not ingredients that are just haphazardly thrown together and claimed to do this. This is becoming a very exact science. How much CBD, how much THC, which terpene you're going to use. I got into a company a couple years ago, TBPMF, Tetra Biopharma. They are a Canadian company, pharmaceutical. They invented a drug that is mixed with THC, CBD, and terpenes that you actually vape because it gets into your system fast. The fastest way to get into your system is by inhaling it. So in less than three minutes, it was in your system. And what did this do? It eradicated pain in your body in less than three minutes. And they had proven it worked on some of the worst pain we know of. Stage four cancer 
fast critical onset pain. Pain that is so hard, hit you so fast, you take medicine now, 15 minutes later after it's wiped you out and finally stopped, you're still waiting for the medicine to kick in. This vape worked immediately so that cancer patients could find relief. They have nothing right now. I mean, I was thinking even someone who had kidney stones, just before they went and took a pee, they could take a vape of this and maybe that's going to help them out. Maybe a pregnant woman as she's giving birth. I don't know. But it is an exact science. And they are learning these terpenes are the guided missiles that deliver the CBD, CBG, THC, whatever it is. Pick the right terpene and you can send your concoction to exactly where you want it to go. So I'm real excited about this product. These are mints and they are gummies. We got another brand here I still want to talk about. This is Mindy's. This is their edibles. They have gummies and they have chocolates. And they've brought on board a award-winning chef called Mindy Siegel to do their work. Now, that's not my area of expertise, so I've never heard of Mindy Siegel. But this is not a unique idea. Canopy Growth already did this. They brought in Martha Stewart. She has her own CBD line now. I think it's called Martha CBD, as a matter of fact. But she is with Canopy Growth, as well as Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg has got his own marijuana, and he is aligned with Canopy Growth. And you know when these are American companies, because Canadian companies cannot have any fancy packaging. It'll always look like a medicine bottle. And they cannot do any advertising, and they cannot endorse it with celebrities. So anytime you see any of that going on, you know you're dealing with an American company. This company, their celebrity is Chef Mindy Seagal. And I'll have to do some more investigating to learn what she's about. And then they've got Remedy. Remedy is their most concentrated rosins, tinctures, CBDs, THCs, where you take one or two drops underneath your tongue, which is the second fastest way to get in your body. Again, in just a few minutes, it is in your system and doing whatever it's supposed to do. And you've got to do your own research for what all of these different things can do. But those are their products right there. But there is some more information I want to share with you. I jumped into their most recent financial. It's always a good thing to scan through a financial. Now, what I do for a scan, two things basically. One, I look at the dates. The dates are a good giveaway to current information. And if you don't want to scan with your eyeballs, just use the search bar. Look up, you know, a certain month or a certain year. The other thing I do is just look at the first sentence of each paragraph. First, I look at the headline to see if it's a category I'm interested in. If it is, then I just go to each paragraph and look at the first uh, sentence to see if it says anything that catches my attention. Well, I had two here that caught my attention. That's not to say there's not more important information in this entire financial. I'm just letting you know these two caught my attention and I'm gonna share them with you. During the fourth quarter of 2023, the company completed the sale of assets at our Encanto Green Cross Dispensary in Arizona. Now they don't say it here, but it is true fact. It looks as though they have exited Arizona completely, 100%. They are no longer in that state. Now, this could be in connection with this other piece of information. Remember, I told you at the very beginning that this company was going to merge with the other company that I'm going to share with you. The other company is called the Cannabis Company, but they just changed their name here recently. They used to be called Colombian Care. And they were a big company when they were Colombian Care as well. Well, in March of 2022, the company announced it had entered into a definitive agreement, a merger agreement, with Columbia Care. They were going to acquire 100% of the company. However, on June 30th, 2023, it was announced that the company was not able to complete the necessary divestitures required to obtain regulatory approvals to close the Colombian care transaction by the last date of June 30th, 2023. Now, what they're saying here, somebody had to get rid of something. Necessary divestitures, divesting, getting rid of, selling. Somebody didn't do it. I don't know who, but look up here. They just got rid of this in the fourth quarter of 2023. 
something had to be gotten rid of before the second quarter of 2023. Was this what had to be gotten rid of and it was just done late? I don't know. And it really doesn't matter. It's just me thinking out loud. So I don't see anything on record that says these two are going to reattempt a merger. So I'm not leading up to that with sharing both of them with you. I'm just sharing both of them with you. Last thing I want to share with you about the company. The company is vertical. They do everything from start to finish. They do not rely on anybody else for any stage of their business. They can make more money if they raise the prices on their goods. But competition is serious. You just can't go raising your price without hurting yourself. Well, what you can do is on the other end, since you're growing it, produce more cannabis for less. And that's what they tell us they've done here. And it is a big improvement. They have gotten 2.2 million more grams of flour produced on 9% less grow room. Now, all of the marijuana that we smoke has to be grown under canopy in a grow room, in a grow house. You cannot grow it outside. So every square foot is valuable to you. You want to make as much money as you can with it. And they tell us that they are doing this and it is a 10% increase in their square footage. Now, I have no idea how many square footage their grow house is. And before you go just seeing in your mind one little grow house, uh uh. Folks, some of these grow houses are as big as football fields. You could fit city blocks in some of these. They are enormous. And when you figure out all their square footage and how many grams they're producing per square footage, it's like, Holy cow, that's a lot of money. And that's how these companies are doing a half a billion to a billion dollars a year from selling marijuana that they grew because they have huge grow rooms. And where are they? In every single state that they're working in. They have to build one in every state. They can't put one in Arizona and send that over to Ohio. No, they got to put a grow room, a grow house in Ohio. They've got to put one in California and they're all really, really big. They tell us here that they have 150 plus new flower varieties added in Illinois, Pennsylvania, Florida, California, and Ohio, representing anywhere from 50 to 100% new menu creation. Well, you know, I said over 150 strains and I was right. But if we start doing the math here, we're looking closer to 225, 250, maybe 300 flower strains. Now, how many different flower strains are there? It's unlimited. It's unlimited. You can take any two strains and mix them together and then take that pairing and mix it with a new one. And you can concoct anything you want. And they're coming up with some beauties. I mean, they grow differently. The leaves change a little bit. The colors change. The smells change. I'm loving the variety. It's better than the cereal aisle. I'm telling you the truth. All right, so let's go see what the stock is doing now that you've got an idea of what the company is doing. Relative volume around Cresco on Friday. It was up about 30%, going from 818,000 shares a day over the last 30 days, jumping to 1.2 million on Friday. Share structure for the company. Outstanding share count, about 324 million. Insiders own about 43 million, not bad. We get all the rest, 280 million. It's an average float. Nothing special, but nothing to cry about. Market cap for the company, we're just cresting $650 million for this cannabis company. Now, let's take a look at those financials. What is this company doing? She's doing well. She has taken a dip this last year. Four years ago, we were at $476 million. You got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. 2021, when we were into the COVID crisis, we were way up at 821. 2022, 842, and now we've dipped down to 770 million. Now, cannabis companies were doing really well during COVID because they were considered essential business. That happened March 28th. You go look at the charts, almost every chart will show you that March 28th was the floor of the COVID fall. That's when everything started to turn up. It was 
actually the end of the two-year fall for cannabis. They announced that cannabis was going to be an essential business, which means it was going to continue running, not for our sake, but for the community's sake, the county's sake, the, the municipality's sake, because they were going to make money. Remember, every single business was virtually closed down when COVID hit. So what they did is found businesses where you didn't have to have human contact and still get business done. So we resorted to ways of doing business that we were doing in the 70s. We put a man on the corner selling marijuana and you drove up and you gave him your money and he gave you your marijuana and you drove away. And that business supported a lot of cities during COVID, believe it or not. And that's why it was a central business because it could be done without a lot of human contact and it generated revenues for these municipalities. And as you can see, the profit's strong. They're not losing money any time at all. Out of that 770 million, they got to take home 362 million, which is virtually 50%. Taking a look at the quarterlies, not bad. We're doing roughly 190 million every three months. Folks, that's like $63 million a month selling marijuana. And they're only in six to eight states, right? Balance sheet, what have they got? Well, in the bank, remembering those three zeros, we got 108 million assets, $1.3 billion in assets. Let's hope they don't have a lot of liabilities, 854 million, which gives us $505 million in stockholder equity. We are holding over a half a billion dollars in this penny stock, this cannabis stock right here. What do you think is going to happen when things change? The laws go legal for us? Oh my God, I am really excited for this sector. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. Uh, we do have some recent filings here. Um, I did look at this. I can't remember. I'll share this with you. Let's see what we've got. Uh, this has to do with filing fees. I'm not quite sure. Oh, I think this has to do with their options. Yes, they've got an option program, which I am not familiar with whatsoever. This CB is also about those options. Uh, the options had a cash-in price of $3.85, but they're a wash right now. The price is a lot less than that. So they're looking to change the uh, exercise price on them, which is going to make a lot of investors happy. So taking a look at the news now. So we have got the most recent piece of news at March 13th, which is their financial. And really that's the best piece of news you can really look at. I'm not just talking about the money, but a lot of times they'll tell you what they've done in the past and what they have planned to do in the future. So I've jumped in here, scanned through it, and these are the bullets of information I found interesting. For the fourth quarter of 2023, their revenues were $188 million, as we just seen, which was down just a smidge, 2%. Their gross profits were 96 million. Adjusted gross profits were up 12% year over year, which were about 100 million. Fourth quarter's adjusted EBITDA nearly doubled year over year to 55 million. EBITDA, I like to think of as gross revenues. That is earnings before interest, taxes, deductions, and amortization. So sounds like gross revenues to me. And they have nearly doubled that year over year. And they have retained the number one share position in Illinois, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts, as I was saying. Looking over the fiscal year, the entire year, revenues were 771 million. Adjusted gross profit was 377 million, or 49% of the revenue. As I said, almost a 50% profit margin. A net loss of 180 million for the full year, which included 151 million of impairment charges. Now that's a lot of loss, but I'll be honest, folks, look at virtually every cannabis company. They're all running at a loss, still running at a profit, still have stockholder equity, doing all of that without any help from the banks. 
but they are running at a loss. But once the laws change and they start getting deductions, they're going to pay half as much in taxes. They're going to be able to keep more in profit and the books are going to completely flip on financials. And we're going to see a lot of these companies looking super juicy, like green apples going red overnight. Management has a comment down here. I'm proud to share that our Q4 results capped off the year of the core with strong bottom line growth and margin expansion. That's because they're now getting more marijuana per square foot. Nearly doubling our adjusted EBITDA and achieving positive free cash flow for the year. They're sitting in really good position, folks. Don't worry about how much money they're running at a loss. They are making strong revenues. They're making strong profits. They're increasing their profit margin. They're expanding business. You will see, it seems like every few months they come out with another dispensary in one of their states, and that causes a nice jump. But let me tell you what, when the DEA comes out with an announcement of rescheduling for America, and now we can start sending our marijuana across borders out of the country. Now they can whittle down all of their facilities and start saving all of that expense. Folks, when they can start getting tax deductions, everything is going to change big, especially, especially here in America. All right, let's go take a look at the chart for this company. So let's take a look at Cresco Labs, ticker CRLBF. Got her opened up on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. Now we're looking at a three-year, one-week chart, so you can get a big picture on what this company's been going through. She's been falling for a real long time. Back in April of 2021, she had a high of $13.65. In August of 2023, more than two years later, she hit her low of $1. Now off of this low bubble, she changed her trend. I'm not saying she's climbing, but she's not falling anymore. So that's a change of trend. Basically, she jumped up to this 50 zone and she's been going sideways on that 50 day SMA, but she's making progress. She was underneath it for half the time, bobbled through it a little, and now she is sitting on top of it. But more relevant on this chart is that 200 day haul. I know most of you aren't familiar with the 200 day haul. It's a lot like your 200-day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, and then puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with two long-term lines on your chart, and the 200-day haul has as much authority on this chart as the 200-day SMA does. And penny stocks really respect it. And right now, it is starting to turn up. Things are looking good on the chart in that direction. Oscillators. We do have some heating up going on here. It's not fast and furious or anything, but our PPO, percentage price oscillator, a lot like your MACD, that is too climbing. And our RSI is dipping a little bit, but there is some heat on the charts, just not a lot of it. Now that bobbling you see right there on the 50, when you come down to the one day, one year chart, it translates into bobbling around the 200 day SMA. And it did the same thing here. She was underneath the 200-day SMA, bobbled through it, and now she's sitting on top of it. But more importantly, she changed the trend of that 200-day SMA. It was falling. She bobbled around on top of it, made it flat, tugged on it a little bit, and now it is starting to climb. She is coming down a little bit. We can see that pressure on all of our oscillators. Every single one of them are turned down and pushing down, looking like they've got more to give on the push. Coming down to that six month, four hour view. Wow, lots of volatility, let's calm it down. So as you can see, she is basically going sideways on the chart, but that's not to say she isn't doing anything. We've got some big bounces on one side and the other side of the 200. She's down here at a dollar, she went up to $2.77, came back down to a dollar, bounced up to $2. There's lots of money to be made in bounces while you're waiting for this stock to rocket to the moon. Now, I don't know when that's going to be. God only knows. We have lots of big catalysts. Presidential election could set things off just by talking about it. The DEA could set it off by rescheduling. The company itself could have news of some sort or another. There's all sorts of things going on with this company. And she's holding her weight. She's not falling. That's what we see here. She is going sideways, giving money away as you're waiting. So I'm liking this chart. She is a little weak right now. She's sitting on top of the 200, 
but all of our oscillators are turned and pointed down. She's probably going to come underneath it again. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, let's see. We had a breakout, didn't we? She was at 166 here, and every single SMA crossed the 200-day SMA with the price. She went from 166 up to 226. That's nice. And then from there, she just went sideways. Now she's got the support of all these SMAs on top of this 200. There was no reason for her to fall. So she just waited for them to catch up. She bounced off the 20, started to lose it. Oh, here comes some strong strength, our 200 haul and our 50. Boink, she snagged onto that and she just rolled that for quite a few days. Now, I don't know what caused her to fall a few days ago. She tried to recover, bounced up underneath the 50 day here and lost it. She's come down to the 200 and it looks like she's coming underneath the 200 right now. There's been a lot of sell volume on Friday. And all of our osculators are looking pretty weak right now. The PPO is falling and the MACD is falling. The only thing that looks good and it's not good is our RSI. It's down here on the floor. That's why it's blue. 30. It hit the 30 mark at least and it's bounced up and it's at 35. And that's the good news. It's bounced up. The RSI is starting to climb. And the RSI is the price line. So when the RSI climbs, the price is climbing. You change all these bars on the chart into a line, it's going to look like that line right there. That is the price line. So if this is climbing, it means there is a change of heart going on right now. Maybe we can see that on our five-day, five-minute. Oh, yeah. Look at that big green bar right there. Oh, that's interesting. Well, this is a bad chart, isn't it? You can see she's fighting for life. She keeps pushing hard, falling under, pushing hard, falling under. She can't find the strength to stay on top of this 200. And oop, she lost it. She's falling underneath all of her SMAs right now. Struggling, but what do we got there? A big M, M for murder. At the tail of an M, you normally see a big fall. That's exactly what we had. Had this been a big W at the end of the W for winner, you normally end up with a big rip. Would have been nice to have a W, but instead we got the M, a double tap. So she came all the way down from $2.19 down to $1.90, hitting a low bubble on Friday. Now, it's not a 52-week low, but on these shorter charts, that is the low bubble. Now, what's interesting here is she started to make a change of trend. We had a, a change with some big bars. These are all little itty bitty bars falling, falling. Then we get a huge green bar going through the 50-day SMA. Fell down no lower than where it started and pushed up to it again. Then you get volatility. You get this bloated dojo. You get a wick on both sides of this little tiny bar in the middle. Very, very deep, which is a good sign to me. I think of this like when you're building a bridge or a building that you're going to take up real high. You got to put a, a foundation pillar deep into the ground so things don't wobble and, and you know go back and forth. That's the way I see these. Because over and over again, I will see a big wick go deep down and then it jumps right back up real fast. And following that, it just starts to climb. Well, with this turnaround in the big green bars and the deep wick, and she is trying to push up, not to mention all of our oscillators are in recovery. Every single one of them now is starting to push up, not our ADX, which is okay. ADX is trend continuation. You want a straight line. If this line doesn't change direction, whatever's going on in the board continues. Well, whenever you see your PPO, that blue line going up, and your ADX going down, guaranteed your price is climbing, 100%. If they're coming towards each other, guaranteed your price is falling, 100%. So this tells me right now we have a turnaround. She is changing trend right now. What she's going to do with it, I don't know. But we're not looking at this for a run. There's no catalyst right now. We're looking at it for a good entry price. We're looking at it for, I mean, she could rip at any time. But I like this stock for a long hold. You can get out of it early after a couple rips. But down the road, this company's going to be big. America did $30 billion worth of business roughly this year. When it goes legal, I can see the 
American companies doing $300 billion worth of business now that they can sell to every state in the union, now that they can export it to other countries. Just think of how big that market's going to get. Forget about the fact that they get tax deductions. That's going to change everything. Forget about the fact they're going to synergize and get rid of all the redundancies, all those extra factories they didn't need, and they'll go to a much more efficient hub and spoke or something else. I like this company. That's why I'm sharing it with you. But of course, do some more due diligence. There's always more to know. All right, let's go check out the next company, the Cannabis Company. Now I'm ready to talk about the next cannabis company. They are called the Cannabis Company, ticker CBSTF. Now you've probably already noticed I look a little bit different because it's a different day. When I make these videos on the weekend, I take my time. I don't rush through it. So I covered Cresco on Saturday. Today being Sunday, I'm covering the cannabis company. Now, I am also aware that I took over 45 minutes to cover Cresco. Gee whiz. But let's be honest, I wasn't just talking about the stock. I gave you a lot of peripheral and background information about the cannabis sector to enlighten you. I'm not going to have to do that all over again. So we should get through this ticker quicker. So CBSTF, the cannabis company, used to be called Columbia Care. They changed their name in 2021 to the cannabis company. Now they are a leader in the industry here in America. They're one of the biggest cannabis companies, but they want to be the biggest cannabis company. No, duh. Who doesn't? They all say that. But this company is showing signs they're serious. They're working hard pressing towards that goal. So CBSTF, she finished today on Friday just a little over 30 cents, but she dropped just a little over 8%. She, like Cresco, is on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. This is the most transparent, the most trustworthy. You get as many filings on the QX as you would as if you were on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. They got lots of validated information here. We've got a transfer agent verified, but we are missing our verified profile. I don't know why it's not here, and I'm really not too worried about it, primarily because of that penny stock exempt. Remember, this tells us that they've been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars in assets or revenues during that time period, and they've kept up with their financials. So they're not acting like a kid. They're not risky. They've shown they're responsible and acting like an adult. So we can trust this company. The other thing, they've got independent directors listed here. Now you got to have independent directors if you're going to uplist. And when you're serious about uplisting, you put them over here. But they can't uplist because it's an American company that touches the plant and it's still federally illegal. So this is as far as they can get. But keep that in mind. It's going to be a horse race. It's going to be popcorn coming out of the pot. When the laws change, all of these good cannabis companies sitting up there on the QX, waiting anxiously to go up to the major exchange, they're going to do it. When the laws change, pop, 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 they're going to pop from the OTC right up to the NASDAQ. That's when you're really going to be watching these companies because when they get onto the NASDAQ, they're going to be in front of people who have money, who are also going to be aware of the cannabis sector heating up. And that's when these could probably take off. So what is the cannabis company all about? Cannabis. <laughs> no, duh. What else are they about? Well, let's focus in on them a little bit here. The cannabis company, formerly known as Columbia Care, is one of the largest and most experienced cultivators, manufacturers, and providers of cannabis products and related services, operating in 16 states right now. Now, depending where you read, these numbers vary a little bit. But what they tell us here, the company operates 125 facilities. Break that down, it is 94 dispensaries and 31 grow houses and processing facilities. Folks, it is a big operation, very big. The cannabis company is one of the original multi-state providers of cannabis in the United States and now delivers industry-leading products and services to both the medical and the adult use markets. Adult use, what about the children? Right, it's recreational use. So let's get some more information. Jumping on over here to the company's website. These are the 16 states they are working in, a bunch of them over here by the capital, Florida, California, 
Arizona, Colorado, Missouri, and Illinois. And they are selling their products through six brands. These are their brands. And of course, they've got lots of different flowers, lots of vapes, all sorts of products. And I can't go through all of it, but I'll give you as much information as we can bear up to. This brand is called Seed and Strain. It's one of their most popular brands. This is available in 13 markets and it is receiving awards. All of their products are receiving awards from people you should know. How about High Times? You ever heard of High Times? They know their weed. They have gotten two awards from them and one from the Earl Cup. Another one of their brands is Triple Seven. This sells cannabis and vapes and perfume <laughs> that's what i found when i was digging around they actually have a cannabis infused perfume and since we haven't got any digital applications that allow me to smell it online <laughs> i have no idea what that is going to smell like but it shows you the innovation that they are getting into now and the triple seven brand is being sold in 12 states then you've got classic x Classic X is our everyday, timeless lifestyle brand that celebrates incredible cannabis moments shared with friends. You got to share it with your friends. This is being sold in five different states and they too are getting awards for their brand. This is Hetty. I think it's Hetty, right? These are their edibles, but their edibles are a little different. They infuse them with Azuka, a fast acting time infusion allowing high quality cannabinoids to take effect in two to 15 minutes. Now they said cannabinoids. I don't think these are THC, but there may be, I don't know. These are being sold now in 11 states. Then we've got Amber. This is a unique brand. These are their concentrates and vapes. These are products you probably haven't heard about before. Diamonds, crumble, resin, shatter, these are all meltable products. They don't burn and smoke like flour. You don't get ash and tar in your lungs. They're a lot pure. And the real difference here is, is that they're working with high concentrations of terpenes. Terpenes, as I told you over and over again, give the essence, the characteristics to every strain. It smells this way because it has this type of terpene. It tastes that way because it has that type of terpene. Well, they really concentrate those terpenes so you get a lot of flavor and essence with these. Then we've got Press 2. These are edibles like the Wonder Wellness, those little tablets you take that make you feel something. These are real small. I don't know if they're microdose. I couldn't find out what the dosage was. They're hard tablets like mints. You take control of your cannabis with hard pressed THC tablets formulated by industry experts for morning, day, and night. They've got three different types and they use their names just like Wonder did. Shine, Rally, and Doze feature fast acting cannabis special formulations designed for morning, afternoon, and night routines. These are being sold in eight different states. Then they obviously have an online platform so that you can shop online, whether you're in the store, you know, it just makes it easier sometimes, or you're at home. A lot of states have home delivery, so you can just open up your app, find what you want to buy, and have them delivered to your house like pizza. Don't forget to tip your weed, man. It may be important someday. And finally, they have Stash Cash. This is cannabis rewards. The more you buy, the more rewards you get. The Stash Cash app is a platform for customers to build loyalty rewards, shop from anywhere, and discover new products. Yeah, you know, maybe you'll take your rewards and try something you normally wouldn't pay cash for. So that's what you got going on. They've got many brands working in many states, selling online, offline, and they've got an reward program and they are working hard to expand. Every few months, they bring out a piece of news that they have got another dispensary. Speaking of news, let's go take a look at the news and the information about the stock now. So we have bounced back here to my playground, the otcmarkets.com website. Honestly, folks, this is where I do initially all my research and due diligence on any stock. doesn't matter if it's major exchange or OTC. This site carries information for all those stocks. Now, every now and then something is missing, but for the most part, I get everything I'm looking for. Right now, we are looking at the relative volume for the cannabis company. 
Over the last 30 days, she's been doing roughly 1.2 million shares a day. Friday, she kicked that up about uh, 25% maybe to just over 1.5 million. Share structure for the cannabis company. Outstanding share count is about 450 million. We are just under a half a billion shares. Restricted shares. This is what the insiders own. They've got themselves about 63 million. We get all the rest if these numbers are correct. Our float is about 385 million. Not a great float, but not terrible. It's an average float. Market cap for the company. We are currently about 136 million. Financials for CBSTF. Wow. Look at all the years we've got listed here. Now, the thing about the OTC markets, you have to give them certain information that is absolutely required from you. But there's a lot of information these companies can voluntarily supply. And that's what it looks like here. It looks like they're just giving us extra information, making themselves more transparent. We are all the way back to 2017 when they did $88 million worth of business back in 2017. Now, we know it's millions. We got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. The most recent financial that came out December of 2023, we we're over a half a billion dollars, 511 million. And of that, we're getting to keep about one third of it, 179 million in profit. Quarterlies, got a lot of those as well. And look at that. In 2020, she did $83 million in one quarter which is equivalent to her annual revenues in 2017. So we can see she's definitely growing. We had a big bounce here to 200 million, right smack dab in the middle of COVID. And then she leveled off here at about 130 million for the last year for every quarter. And again, she's keeping about 30% roughly of that for profit. Checking out the balance sheet for the company. Lots of information here, focusing in on the most recent, We've got about $35 million in the bank. Total assets, $823 million. Total liabilities, it's close, but it's less, $756 million. So that means we do have positive stockholder equity of 66, closer to $67 million we're holding in this company. Checking out the disclosures. All right, we've got an S3 here. It's not nice, but it's not real. <laughs> what I mean by that is they're telling us that they're about ready, or at least they're thinking about having a public offering and putting about 84 million more shares on the market. But it isn't a decisive decision yet. They tell us right up here, the information in this prospectus is not complete and may be changed. This is not telling us they're going to do it. They're telling us they're thinking about doing it. So they're just giving us a heads up here. Then we've got a lot of Form 4s here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock, and they can do that in a lot of variety of ways, but we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. None of these are purchases or sales. Over here, it'll tell you who's buying and who they are in the company, and right down here, it'll tell you how they're getting their shares. That code right there. If we see a P, it's a purchase. If you see an S, it's a sale. Over here, it'll tell you how many and for what price. Well, this isn't a P or an S, so they didn't buy them or sell them. They got them in another way. And normally, I'm really not interested in how they got them. But if you are, just come on down here to explanation of responses. And normally, you can see it right here. And they are telling us that they are converting restricted shares into common shares right now. And it seems that all of the insiders are doing it. But there are no purchases. There are no sales. Jumping on over to that news. The company has a lot of news. We're not going to go through all of it. I'm just looking at the most current news going back about two months. And what you see is the company is constantly expanding business. They're working with other companies. Now, what isn't here, and I would expect to see it in the next 30 to 60 days, is another dispensary. That is a regular occurrence. As I said, right now they have got 91 dispensaries in 16 states. So headlining most of this news, February 1st, the company adds successful California House of Brands, Sassinia Labs, to its national portfolio. 
February 15th, the company expands retail and wholesale partnership with rapidly growing vaporizer brand, Aero. Now, maybe you've heard of Aero. Aero's got a lot of different types of vapes. They're just not all cannabis. I think they've got other types of vapes as well. And I've actually seen these in regular stores. So they're doing business with them now. February 22nd, the company highlights product innovation with the launch of unique, fast acting and longer lasting. Oh, we like that. Get in there and start working quick and last for a while. What do they got? Layered edibles. I don't know anything about that, but it sure sounds yummy. Then here in uh, March on the 19th, the company closes a $25 million private placement. You got to love a private placement. That's got nothing to do with us. It's not a public offering. It is a big investor coming in and investing in the company. $25 million worth. That's sweet. Then here in April, we've got two pieces of news we do want to take a look at. The cannabis company announces new multi-state retail, manufacturing, and wholesale partnership with woman-led brand Flower by Eddie Parker. The other piece of news we're going to look at, the cannabis company and Reverie expand partnership in four new East Coast markets. So this piece of news came out on the 4th. The cannabis company, one of the largest and most experienced cultivators, manufacturers, and retailers of cannabis products in the U.S., announced today a partnership with Flower by Eddie Parker, a leading female-founded and operated cannabis lifestyle brand. Fact of the matter is, I think this company is female-led and run. I know the founder is female. I think she's even black. And you'll see them working with a lot of other companies that are woman-led. The cannabis company will introduce flower by Eddie Parker's premium cannabis products, including pre-rolls, vapes, and edibles to six new markets in Arizona, California, Colorado, Delaware, Florida, and Virginia, and launch a new line of edibles in Illinois, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and New York. The partnership will be the first to introduce flower by Eddie Parker, known for merging with worlds of fashion and flower to customers and patients in these six new markets. The other piece of news came out on the 9th. The cannabis company announced today the expansion of its partnership with Revelry Herb, an artesian quality flower and pre-roll brand launched by the creators of Revelry Supply into the Maryland, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York markets. Through this partnership, the cannabis company supplies a curated collection of strains for Reverly's flower and pre-rolls in Massachusetts and New Jersey. And by mid-April, Reverly products will be on the shelves in Pennsylvania at the company's three Columbia Care dispensaries and across the state through its wholesale channels. Products will also be launched in Maryland, New York, and Ohio in coming months, pending regulatory approval. So as you see, the company's expanding products line. They're expanding with other companies they're working with. They are doing more and more. As I said, they want to be the biggest cannabis company in America. Every company does. But what are they doing to prove it? This company's doing a lot. All right, let's go take a look at the chart for the cannabis. Taking a look at the cannabis company, this is ticker CBSTF, and I've got this dialed into a six-month, four-hour view. Now, actually, that's the entire view. They changed their name and their ticker September of last year. And when you change your ticker, you get a whole new chart. Well, I was still interested in looking at Columbia Care's chart to see what her high was. There are no charts available. Not at Thinkorswim, Yahoo, or even Google. There are no charts. But with a little more research, I was able to discover that the all-time high for the cannabis was $7.65 February of 2021. Now, if you remember, February of 2021 was a hot, crazy month. May have been the hottest month on record for the market. This is when we all got our last stimulus check from the government, and it seems a lot of people came into the market and started spending that money willy-nilly, not knowing what they were doing. We were seeing stocks that hadn't had trades in months, had no management, had no filings, hitting new highs they had never seen before. So that's why I'm thinking maybe 765 isn't an actual high for the company. I mean, it's on the books, but I think it's probably exaggerated. Now, the high in current times 
is a dollar 25. We hit that September 26th, which was three days after the announcement that the HHS had asked the DEA to reschedule cannabis and the cannabis sector took a run. Well, this is the backside of that when it all started to come back down. So she fell from a dollar 25 down to about 30 cents at the end of October. And from here, she just started going sideways for the most part. We had a little bit of roll up. We had a little bit of roll down, hitting this low bubble of 21 cents in March. And off of that low bubble, she jumped up on top of the 50, laid up there for a couple of weeks, looking secure, but she wasn't making any move towards that 200 day SMA. And now she's gone the opposite direction. She has broke back down through that 50 day SMA and even through our 200 haul. So to me, she's looking like she's still going to fall. What do our oscillators say? In full agreement. PPO has had a negative crossover and falling. Same thing with our MACD. Red bars are accumulating. And our RSI was falling, but believe it or not, it's actually starting to climb now. So maybe we'll notice something on the smaller time charts. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, that's a totally different type of chart. That's a breakout. We went from 22 cents on March 15th, working our way through the 200, bounced off it, hitting this high of 37 cents on April 4th. That's about an 80% run right there. She had a big drop through the 200 and bounced right back up to the 50. Looks like she was ready to climb, but she didn't. Everything, all the SMAs are turning, the price is falling, came through the 50, came through the 200, and she is pushing down hard. Now, right now, she's leveled off in the middle. She could be stopping her fall and turning around. What do our oscillators say? Well, at first glance, they look real bad. They all look like they're going down. But at closer examination, you can see our PPO has now leveled out. She's changed her downtrend to a flat trend, Hopefully she's coming around. Same thing with our MACD. It was falling and now it is flat and our RSI is climbing. Take a look at our five day, five minute. Wow. That looks a lot like Cresco's five minute chart, doesn't it? She was rolling down like that. She was up here by her 200, taking these pops, trying to stay above it. And then she crashed underneath it, going underneath all of her SMAs, just like the cannabis. Then she hit a low bubble. Bouncing off of the low bubble, both companies had these big green bars going through the 50-day SMA, falling back down no lower than where this started from, which tells me she's looking to climb. And that's what's going on right now. She is changing her trend. She was underneath every SMA. She has gotten on top of her 20, on top of the 200 haul, and she is right at the 50-day SMA right now. And our oscillators say we are in recovery. We are changing trend. Everything is going up now with some strength on the board. So I like the cannabis company. She's not as big as Cresco, but as I said, you don't have to find the biggest or the best cannabis company to become a winner. You just need to find a company that's growing. The cannabis company is growing. Now, you know, I didn't cover everything, folks. There's a lot more information out there about this company and Cresco. So go do some homework, do some more due diligence. Because you know what I always say, and I mean it, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> See you, folks.